Good morning and welcome to St. John's Church for online worship on this second Sunday of Advent. My name is Emily Wilmer and I am the rector at St. John's and if you are new to us, we are glad that you are here. Today's preacher will be the Reverend Dr. Dorothy White. Our service will be a Liturgy of the Word, which can be found on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer or as a link on this YouTube video. Before we begin our worship, I invite us into a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts for the coming of God in this holy season of Advent. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice in strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 85. We will read Psalm 85, verses 1 through 2 and 8 through 13, found in your service bulletin in unison. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the inequity of your people and blotted out all of their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, 
where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Last Sunday, we walked into the season of Advent. Advent is a time laced with anticipation and excitement as we await the outcome that those of us who live post-resurrection know all too well. As we share our Advent devotionals and mark each day, as bringing us one step closer to the Bethlehem event. 
we can focus on December 25th in ways that actually mar the journey to that date. All of our lessons for today are rich with the message that the place for all of the excitement and attention was the wilderness. Today's gospel lifts up an exemplary life in the person of John the baptizer. John, the way preparer, actually hung out in the wilderness of all places. In times prior to that of John the baptizer, roads were not developed. When Rome conquered areas, their ability to do so largely stemmed from the roads that they built. The road used for travel by royalty was prepared by those who were servants. So if a climb would be deemed too difficult, a level path would be made. If rough places were determined to be too rough, those rough places would be made smooth. So John's way preparing could resonate with those who heard that he too was a preparer of the way. In pondering these lessons and focusing on the gospel, the word that emerged over and over again as I studied the word wilderness. God at work in the wilderness. From the beginning to the end of the biblical story, we see life-changing events emerging from wilderness places. In my preparation for today, I found a number of important aspects that writers pointed out about the wilderness. The wilderness is a revealing place where our ability to see can be transformed. The wilderness is a place that our deepest transformation can actually occur. The wilderness is the place where appetites can change. John actually made his home in the wilderness and this way preparer was not known for his clothing nor his diet, but instead was known for his message. This way preparer had a way, an uncanny ability to convey a message about the human heart that resonated with people and attracted People. The words of Isaiah were unfolding through him, and those deemed the least, they got it. They heard John. The way would be prepared for the Lord, not in the palaces of Rome, nor temples made by human hands, but in the wilderness. John lets the people know that his role is not that of Messiah. He is not their answer and does not even profess to be. He is only a sign pointing to one greater. John, through his obedience, reminds the people of these words. Though the grass withers and the flower fades, the word of God will stand forever. Through Peter's epistle, we are reminded that God keeps his promises. 
We may feel frustrated as we point out that God is not in any hurry about anything. But Peter reminds us that to the Lord, for one for whom a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day, the Lord, the Lord has no need to hurry. In other words, why would eternity rush when time is not Lord? We see evidence over and over again that God is found on the edges, not in our formulas, nor in all of our plans, even our best ideas. And for those of us who are the church, the body of Christ, aren't we called also to be preparers of the way? Are we not called to reveal God to the world? Human history is hungry for the fulfillment of its purpose. For many, this world is a desert. So in the midst of this wilderness, where is the church? Are we like John, a voice pointing beyond ourselves to one greater? Are we, even through this pandemic, hearing and responding to the cries of those in need of God? Are we being called to walk with the bewildered, the confused, the frustrated, because the church The church had gotten too comfortable? Has the church been so focused on programs and striving for perfection in liturgy and music until we forgot the Lord, the reason for liturgy and music? Is the church still letting the world around us know that we baptize with water, but there is one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit? On the surface, beloved, it seems that God has forgotten to be merciful. As COVID-19 numbers rise, the death toll rises, strife meets us on the left and on the right, and yet, I challenge you, I lift up to you for your consideration, that if you listen with your heart, if you listen closely, you can still hear the clarion call. Listen you will hear the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Is that glory yet to be or is it here now, even in this wilderness? I contend, beloved, it is here. Remember, the wilderness can be the place where our vision is altered and our discernment expands. We are challenged to believe in and trust God to be faithful in spite of evidence to the contrary. If this message is not lifted up by God's church, then who will lift it? The psalmist in today's readings leaned into hope, leaned into the reality of God and God's faithfulness by pinning these words. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. What poignant words, what 
a reminder, those who turn their hearts to God will find peace. Even in the wilderness, it is not to minimize suffering. It is not to turn away from the reality of pain and despair. But it is to send, be it even a small voice of a reminder to say, God is still faithful in spite of evidence to the contrary. After all, beloved, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Even now, even in pandemic, even in desert places, even in chaos, Yes, even now. And the hands and feet and even shoulder of Jesus is to be the church. Shall we be a way preparer? Shall we point to one greater than ourselves? I sure hope so. Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed, which may be found on page 358 in your prayer books or in your bulletins. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are in your service bulletin. As we await the coming of Christ and the reign of God's love, let us pray for our own needs, the needs of this community, and the needs of the world. O oh God, creator of life and giver of gladness, let us be your beacon on the hill, shining your light so brightly that others may come to know you, to love and to be loved. Help us to reach out to those around us, bearing fruit through acts of kindness, welcome, and fellowship. As Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For peace in your time, O Lord, and for peace in our time. As Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, for all who minister in the name of Jesus, and for all the holy people of God, as Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For this church and for all churches and houses of worship and for the faithful throughout the world, as Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For justice and freedom among all the peoples of the earth, as Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For President Trump, President-elect Biden, Governor Northam, for all elected and unelected officials, and for the citizens of all nations, as Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For those experiencing hunger, unemployment, underemployment, financial stress, poverty, and or addiction, and for us to respond in love. As Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For the sick and the suffering, especially Anne, Cheyenne, Jack, Lydia, Paul, Marilyn, Judith, Herb, Athena, Irvin, Leslie, Patty, Brenda, Pat, Charlotte, Faye, Paul, Bonnie, Stuart, Bruce, Bill, Michael, Graves, Colleen, the Tompkins children, Jalissa and Christian. As Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For the dying and the dead, as Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. For our own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving offered silently or aloud. For the work God has given us to do in this world, that we may be empowered by the Holy Spirit, as Jesus taught us to pray, let thy kingdom come. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. In the words that Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
turning to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer, or turning to your bulletin, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you and also with you. Welcome again to all of you who are worshiping with us today. Right after our service beginning at 11 o'clock, I invite you to join us online for our Illuminated Advent Sunday Forum series by Jan Richardson, whose writing, artwork, and reflections on the stories of this season create space for us to perceive God in ways that we might have missed before. And then Virtual Children's Chapel for Advent will be offered online at 5 p.m., led by the Reverend Ann Lane Witt. This coming Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, we will continue with our Illuminated Advent series, followed by a service of Compline. Details for all of our online programs and Zoom login instructions can be found in your newsletter and in our bulletin. This coming Monday at 7 o'clock p.m., our Justice Ministry invites you to join in an online meeting to begin research on two key issues affecting our city. If you'd like to be involved, please contact Dorothy White. And then I'd like to thank all of you who assisted with our food pantry collections yesterday or who contributed. We are nearing 6,000 pounds of food collected. Our next collection date will be Saturday, December 19th. In the meantime, we invite you to keep up with your reverse Advent boxes by placing a non-perishable food item in a box or a bag every day until Christmas Eve. Our outreach team will collect your Advent boxes on Saturday, January 2nd. Lastly, I would like to offer my gratitude to all of you who have made your 2021 pledge to St. John's. As of last week, we have received 50 commitments, bringing us to 82% of our goal. I would also like to thank those of you who have pledged in the past and are still prayerfully discerning your commitment for next year. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact our stewardship chair, Marshall Shutt, or any member of our vestry. We will now continue with the blessing, closing hymn, and dismissal. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
in peace, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Thanks be to God.